Okay, so now we're going to use our ring of charge example to do the electric field due to a charged disk. So now we have a solid disk, it's not just a ring. You should probably see where the integral is going to change here already, but I'm going to go through it. We've still used the symmetry. Again, it's the same exact argument. Those x components of the electric field are going to cancel out. The y components are going to all add together. Now what I've written down here, and your book kind of does this on you, so let me explain it. We have already solved with the line of charge in the previous example, these small electric field contributions from a small sort of disk shape inside of our bigger disk. So we have Z. Here we have sigma. We don't have lambda. Sigma stands for the area charge distribution. So the charge over a small amount of area, small amount of charge over a small amount of area. 2 pi r represents the circumference of a small disk that we've already integrated around. But now we have this dr term because now we need that small disk to expand outward to cover the full radius of our big disk. Again, think about calculus integration here a little bit. Our denominator, however, has not changed. It's still 4 pi epsilon naught z squared plus r squared to the 3 halves. You should already notice that now we are going to be integrating with respect to r. So that's going to create a complication down here. We want to be careful as we go through this. Okay? We're going to integrate from 0 to big R, so from inside of our origin with 0 contribution, outward this small disk is going to expand, getting all of those contributions to big R. So now coming over here, let's eliminate some things. So we have DE is equal to sigma Z over 4 epsilon naught. All I did was cancel out the pi here and here to make life a little bit easier. And now I have 2R DR over z squared plus r squared to the 3 halves. Now set up the integral. So e is equal to the integral from 0 to r of de, or the integral from 0 to r of sigma z over 4 epsilon naught. That's just a constant. That will make life very easy. I'm going to put this in terms of a negative exponential so I can easily see what's going on there. z squared plus r squared to the negative 3 halves multiplied by 2r and then my integral dr. And I'm going to put my dr right there to remind me that that is my integration. Okay, a little bit of math later. You know what that means. That means you should probably do this on your own and just make sure you get the same thing. We get that the electric field is equal to sigma z over 4 epsilon naught. And now we have z squared plus r squared to the minus 1 half. And then we have negative 2 over 1 integral from 0 to r. Let's check and make sure that we did that right. If we take the derivative here, the minus 1 half is going to come down in front. That's why I have a minus 2 over 1 here, so that that's going to cancel out. We would then have z squared plus r squared to the minus 3 halves. We've got that right there. And then the integral of what's inside would be 2r because we're, excuse me, the derivative of what's inside, the derivative of what's inside would be 2r. So that right there. So this is the correct answer for our integration. Now two more math steps. We have the electric field is equal to sigma z over 4 epsilon naught. Let's put the minus 2 out here. And then we are going to have z squared plus r squared to the minus 1 half minus 1 over z. They want to put it into a nice form that you can easily see. So what we did was we took a negative uh, minus 2 from the z in order to pull it out. Again, this is just a little bit of math manipulation here. You should be able to look at it and see it. We've applied our limits of integration inside from 0 and r. So this contribution is going to be z squared 1 uh, to the minus 1 half power. That's why we get this guy down here. And then this is our r value right inside of there. So this should actually be a big R squared because we have already done the limits of our integration. And then finally, the electric field is equal to sigma over 2 epsilon naught, 1 minus z over z squared plus r squared to the 1 half power. Okay? That's after we multiply this minus sign 
through everything. Notice that the 2 canceled out over here. Okay? And then they divided everything by z to get up here. I would, guys, I would take some time to do all this math on your own. I have skipped some steps here, giving you guys a chance to kind of play with the numbers a little bit. But just be aware that they're just trying to get it into a nice form up there. This isn't something that I would require. But get used to kind of fiddling with all these numbers and variables in order to get it into some nice, consistent form. Okay? So that means we have looked at a basic charge distribution, the idea of symmetry, the complete ring of charge, and now we've expanded the ring out to a charged disk. Again, in the email where I'm sending all these, I will tell you what page numbers you should be looking at. You should look over these examples thoroughly. You have a bunch of class periods to work on this and also to work on the homework.